Then he transfers attention to the so-called counterpart sign, the mental image that arises out of concentration. Finally, he abandons the sign also. He now develops another kind of awareness, which results from his increasingly delicate concentration. Thus his mind attains a state of utmost calm, known as absorption, or jhana. The breathing is actually present at all stages, but it gradually changes from its normal course condition to a condition so fine that eventually the meditator is not aware of it at all. The IT is then loosely said to have become extinct. This point marks the completion of the first tetrad. This state of great calm is the consummation of the practice of tranquility meditation. It is called the state of bliss here and now, Diadhamasukha Vihara. This bliss here and now has the same taste as the bliss of Nirvana, differing from it only in being temporary and liable to change. Some people are content with this temporary bliss and never aspire to anything higher. Before the time of the Buddha, there were people who mistook this state for Nirvana itself. Those who had right understanding could see that there was something higher than this to be attained. For them the Buddha taught higher forms of practice, which are covered by the remaining stages, 5 to 16. It must not be forgotten that there exists another way of practice, which leads to intuitive insight directly. This is the way of emancipation through insight, which bypasses the jhanas. A meditator who has practiced only as far as neighborhood concentration may proceed directly to insight meditation, vipassana bhavana, kama which aims at bringing insight into the three universal characteristics of impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and non-selfhood. Thus anyone who has practiced up to the last stage of the first tetrad may well omit the second and third tetrads and proceed directly to the fourth, which is directly concerned with the developing of insight. For the sake of completeness we shall discuss the second and third tetrads also. But anyone who wishes to take the shortcut should bypass them and take up the practice leading directly to insight. Chapter 13, The Second Tetrad, From the Contemplation of Feeling to Not Letting Feeling Condition the Mind. Now we come to the method of practice in the second tetrad which deals with the next four steps. 5. Experiencing Rapture while Breathing in and Out. 6. Experiencing Bliss while Breathing in and Out. 7. Being aware of the mental formation while breathing in and out. 8. Calming the mental formation while breathing in and out. These four stages together form a group in mental development in which feeling is used as an object of meditation in place of the bodily formation. I. E. The breathing, as in the first tetrad. Stage 5, the first step of the second tetrad or the fifth stage in the whole of the Anapanasati practices. Experiencing rapture, I shall breathe out. Thus he trains himself, experiencing rapture, I shall breathe in, thus he trains himself. Accordingly there are three main points, 1. Training oneself 2. Experiencing rapture while breathing in and out 3. Knowledge, na, mindfulness, sati, and other things, dhammas, which arise as a result of practice in this stage. Let us consider the first point training oneself, this involves the threefold training of morality or higher virtue, adhisala, higher concentration, adhisita, lit, higher mind, and insight or higher wisdom, adipana, as in the case of the previous steps, see especially stage 3, pages 120 to 130, in the present stage, the meditator contemplates rapture rather than the breathing. Having induced rapture, the meditator maintains mindfulness so as to be aware of that rapture by way of contemplation, that is what is meant by training oneself, as long as he maintains mindfulness of rapture, he is established in higher virtue because during all that time he does no harm to anybody. And his body and speech are composed in the full sense of the term higher virtue. And when he contemplates rapture as an object of mind so that there is no distraction, agitation, etc., then he is fully established in higher concentration because the mind is calm, firm and one-pointed in the full sense of the term higher concentration, and it is ready for developing wisdom. And when he contemplates rapture in this stage as being impermanent, unsatisfactory, non-selfhood, no self or void, then he has higher wisdom in its full sense, thus the whole threefold training can be seen at the act of contemplating rapture when this act is viewed from different angles of the practice. It should be noted here that the terms he trains himself as found in all the following stages as well has, in essence, the same meaning as here. 
The only difference is the object of concentration, which varies in each case. For example, in this stage the object is rapture, the next stage has bliss as the object, the stage after that has the mental formation as the object. And so on, this is the principle which the meditator must clearly understand from the beginning in order to be fully aware of the fact that with each stage of Anapanasati, higher virtue, higher concentration and higher wisdom are present together. The second point is, experiencing rapture, the Pali term pity, rapture, literally means joy but also includes such feelings as delight, pamuja, rejoicing, amadana, joyousness, pamadana, kama, cheerfulness, hasa, glee, pahasa, elation of mind, satasa dagya, satisfaction of mind, satasa adamanada. Briefly, the meaning is heartfelt satisfaction born of the feeling of progress. Rapture is the very result of success in the practice of Anapanasati right from the first stage until this stage when rapture is developed fully the mind is free of distraction, calm and one dash pointed, and the fifth stage the meditator is contemplating rapture directly. Arising of rapture, there are various ways for the arising of rapture, both high and low, gross and subtle. According to the nature of the contemplation and its object, these various ways can be recognized as 16 in number. 1. When the meditator knows, paginato. That the mind is not distracted but one-pointed, concentrated, by the power of contemplating long or short breathing or being fully aware of the whole breathing or by calming the breathing, bodily formation, i.e., throughout the four bases or eight modes, rapture arises. 2. When he contemplates, avajado, that the mind is not distracted but one-pointed, concentrated. By the power of contemplating long or short breathing, etc. in the above-mentioned eight modes, rapture arises. 3. When he perceives, janado, that the mind is not distracted but one-pointed, concentrated, by the power of contemplating long or short breathing, etc. in the above-mentioned eight modes, rapture arises. 4. When he sees clearly, pasado, that the mind is not distracted but one-pointed by the power of contemplating long or short breathing, etc. Rapture arises. 5. When he reflects, is pakavekado, that the mind is not distracted but one-pointed by the power of contemplating long or short breathing, etc. Rapture arises. 6. When he decides mentally, siddha adhihat, that the mind, etc. Rapture arises. 7. When he resolves with faith, sadhya adhimakado, that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 8. When he exerts energy, vriya pagat, that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 9. When he establishes mindfulness, sataya papayado, so that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 10. When he concentrates the mind, siddha samadahado, so that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 11. When he knows clearly through wisdom, Panaya Paginato, that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 12. When he knows thoroughly through the highest knowledge, Abhinaya Abhijanato, that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 13. When he understands what is to be understood, Paraniya Pajahato, so that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 14. When he abandons what should be abandoned, Patapa Pajahato, so that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 15. When he develops what should be developed, Tapa Bhavayato, so that the mind, etc. rapture arises. 16. When he realizes what should be realized, Saka Kataba Saka Kuroto, so that the mind, etc. rapture arises. Each of these 16 ways individually shows the cause of the arising of rapture. They will now be explained briefly, according to items, 1 to 5, rapture arises because one contemplates and is aware of non-distraction through one-pointedness of mind through breathing in and out, in each of the four bases or eight modes of the first tetrad. This means rapture can arise while one is contemplating breathing in any of the four bases. Items 1 to 5 show the five ways of contemplation arranged in ascending order from low to high or gross to subtle. Contemplation in general is called Pajnana, contemplation of a higher level is specific and is called Vijnana. Knowing clearly is at a still higher level and is called Jnana, seeing clearly is higher again in level and is called Pasana. 
Lastly specific reflection in detail is termed Pakavekana. All these five ways are directed towards concentration of mind and consequently rapture arises in each case. In each of the five cases rapture differs in intensity, being gross or subtle according to the nature of the contemplation. Item 6 says 1 decides mentally this implies the directing of the mind to some higher state and keeping it firmly set on that state without any change. To be specific, the meditator here directs his mind towards attaining calmness in the practice of meditation. Rapture arises because the mind is successfully set at that time. Items 7 to 11 imply that each of the five mental faculties operates in full swing and thereby rapture arises. Item 7 means that the meditator resolves all doubts and believes that his practice is his refuge, and thus rapture arises. Item 8 means that there is an even greater earnestness owing to the previous power of satisfaction from rapture. And that this gives the meditator more energy to practice. Item 9 means that when the meditator is able to maintain mindfulness to his satisfaction, i.e. can develop mindfulness as required in all stages of the practice, rapture arises. Item 10 means that awareness by the meditator that he is able to concentrate the mind gives rise to rapture. Item 11 means rapture, born out of knowledge that he is able to induce wisdom, panna. He knows clearly through wisdom all the characteristics concerned with the eight modes of breathing. All these five ways, 7 to 11, are also based on the eight modes of breathing, but they are successively more subtle in quality. Item 12 means knowledge on a higher level than is mentioned in item 11, that is to say. The meditator knows more than just the characteristics concerned with breathing. He knows more about the things, dhammas, directly leading to cessation of suffering, and consequently rapture arises. The four items 13 to 16 refer to direct knowledge of the four noble truths, item 13 implies clear knowledge about suffering. The meditator knows suffering and its nature, rapture arises because in suffering he finds the main source of trouble and is full of hope to destroy it, item 14 implies knowledge that the cause of suffering is defilements. Kalesa. He knows, too, he has destroyed, and is destroying, some defilements, and consequently rapture arises. Item 15 means knowledge of the thing which should be developed, or has developed, or is developing. This refers to the way leading to the cessation of suffering. Be why destroying his defilements, while contemplating breathing in this stage some forms of suffering calm down or are destroyed. On knowing that this method will end suffering rapture arises. Item 16 is to know what should be realized, i.e., the state of extinction of suffering called cessation, nirodha, or the unconditioned, nibbana, or deliverance, the moody, dot a state of freedom from suffering appears clearly in proportion to the destruction of defilements. When he is aware of this state of freedom from suffering, even for a moment, rapture arises. Contemplation in these four ways is also based on the eight modes of breathing as already mentioned. To sum up, no matter whether rapture is strong or weak, it is based entirely on breathing in and out. Therefore, it has been said experiencing rapture I shall breathe out, shall breathe in. Each kind of rapture here is an object of contemplation of breathings in this stage. Let the meditator gradually train himself and induce rapture in the full sense of the term and he will be entitled to be called one having perfection in the fifth stage of Anapanasati taught the method of dealing with rapture for further progress, the practice based on all the kinds of rapture which have arisen as objects is as follows. A. Uh, experiencing rapture, when the meditator has induced rapture through any of the sixteen ways and is fully aware of it all the time while breathing in and out. Then he is called one experiencing rapture. Don an important point must now be considered. While experiencing rapture what else is known, what follows this knowledge so that finally suffering ceases through the practice of Anapanasati? When rapture has appeared clearly in any one of the sixteen ways based on breathing, then feeling, Vedana, has become manifest. Rapture is here called feeling because it is experienced by the meditator as a kind of feeling. And it is therefore convenient to use the term rapture in a conventional sense to mean feeling for the purposes of practical instruction. The term bliss, sukha, used in the sixth stage, is also included in feeling, Vedana. The arising of feeling depends on breathing in and out and becomes manifest through mindfulness. As to the question, 
What is the nature of contemplation? There are two kinds of contemplation. Firstly, by way of object or sign, Rama Upanijana. For focusing the mind on one single point in order to gain concentration. Secondly, contemplation by way of characteristic, Laka Upanijana. For seeing the true nature of things in terms of impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and no self. This second kind of contemplation is meant for seeing the characteristics of feeling, vidana, as they really are, and so leads to wisdom, panna. Therefore mindfulness, besides enabling one to gain concentration, also leads to knowledge, na, of the characteristics of things. When the meditator knows the characteristics, this means na has arisen in him. This practice then involves both sati and na. To experience rapture he must have both mindfulness, sati, and knowledge, na, as both are concerned with feeling. To conclude, feeling, born out of contemplation of breathing, becomes manifest. Mindfulness performs the function of insight knowledge, anupasanana, contemplation, knowledge and awareness in one. Feeling serves as an object of contemplation by means of mindfulness, which leads the meditator to concentration and also leads to or performs the function of knowledge, the meditator contemplates anapasati, feeling by means of that mindfulness and that knowledge in this practice is the kind of development, bhavana. Known as the development of the establishment of mindfulness, sat upon a bhavana. Since mindfulness contemplates feeling this practice has the name of Vednanyupasana Satapana Bhavana, which means the development of establishment of mindfulness consisting in contemplation of feelings. Since Bhavana involves contemplating the different kinds of pity resulting in the 16 ways, it is referred to as Vedna Suvadana Pasana Satapana Bhavana. The development of the establishment of mindfulness consisting in contemplation of feelings in the feelings. Now the next thing to be taken into account is the way in which the meditator contemplates Anupasati. That rapture or feeling by means of that mindfulness and that knowledge. B. Contemplating Anupasana, Rapture. This implies that the meditator contemplates the characteristics of rapture as a feeling. He does not consider it as a factor of jhana as he did in the fourth stage. To contemplate, to see the characteristics of things, anyapasana, involves altogether seven stages, which must be examined in depth since the whole practice of anapanasati from the present stage onward is intended for this very. Anyapasana in its seven stages, anyapasana, first stage, the feeling of rapture is contemplated as being impermanent, not as permanent, and so the meditator abandons the perception of permanence, nikasana. When the meditator practices in such a way that he is able to watch, follow and contemplate the feeling wisely, correctly and in detail then he sees clearly the impermanence of feeling. Previously, of course, he may have conceived of feeling as permanent but since right understanding has arisen the meditator abandons the perception of permanence. In order to understand the practice from this stage onward the simple expression he sees feeling as impermanent and and doing so abandons the perception of permanence should always be borne in mind as an expression with very wide connotation. The expression covers the arising of all other things, dhammas, which simultaneously arise or become more developed than before. All other things refer to what are called the mental faculties, andriya, the mental powers, bala, the factors of enlightenment, bojaga, kama. The Eightfold Path, Ahajikamaga, and other factors depending on the manner of observing the Dhammas.